Welcome to the latest issue of the Goals-Based Investing Podcast Series. I'm thrilled to be joined today by my good friend and the Dean of the Portfolio Construction Forum, Graham Rich. Graham, welcome. Thank you, Tony. And uh, thanks so much for an invitation for me to connect with you from Sydney, Australia, and uh, to focus around goals-based investing is a really good wrap to put around the conversation uh, that we have and, and essentially what joins us together. I'd love maybe for you to talk a little bit about the Portfolio Construction Forum and some of the work that you do down in Australia supporting kind of the APEC region there. Um, what are you doing? How are you supporting education? And then we'll get into a few topics that are kind of near and dear to both of us. Uh, Portfolio Construction Forum is 20 years old. Uh, my background is in uh, delivering financial information, I guess you could put it in a, in a macro sense, uh, to those who are involved in some discretionary aspect of designing and building and managing uh, multi-asset, multi-manager portfolios. So we're not an undergraduate business. Uh, we're not a tertiary business. Uh, we are what we call a quaternary education business. It's for those who are committed to uh, excellence in continuing education with a specific focus around investment portfolio design. So that's what Portfolio Construction Forum does. We're connected with two universities in uh, Australia, uh, and our role is uh, the executive education aspect of those who've got a portfolio construction role. You and I both have a passion around education. You've been kind enough to invite me to speak at your conference in a couple of weeks here, uh, but also I participated uh, virtually last year. What are some of the unique challenges for practitioners in Australia and New Zealand? And are they similar to the challenges that the, the folks here in the States face? The essence of Portfolio Construction Forum uh, came from uh, the, the mindset that showed those involved in some aspect of portfolio construction, investment portfolio construction, have got, have got information uh, thrown at them uh, from all manner of organizations, uh, investment uh, fund companies, uh, economics houses, the general media, um, et cetera, et cetera. But no, uh, no space to draw all the information together and to provide a realistic framework for thinking. And so uh, Portfolio Construction Forum identified um, five knowledge domains that are in fact applicable just as much to those uh, practicing in portfolio construction in uh, the US, in, in Canada, in the UK, as much as in Australia and New Zealand, and as you say, the APEC region. So in some respects, the challenges across the core of quality portfolio construction are exactly the same. Um, and those challenges relate mostly to an enormous amount of information and no clear framework mm -hmm. about how to think about consolidating that information. And the intriguing thing and the thing that brought us together in the first instance, as you know, is that the peak uh, technical uh, program that draws all these threads together is the Certified Investment Management Analyst or the SEMA program. And so Portfolio Construction Forum uh, is privileged to have responsibility uh, in the Asia Pacific region for the SEMA program and for uh, delivering that SEMA program and supporting SEMA certificates. So that's where we've got a lot in common, I would suggest, between practitioners in our area and practitioners in, for example, North America. And, and again, I, I think there's a lot of commonalities as we're also trying to digest everything that happens in the world. The world is very much connected today. If, if I look at the world and you know, I, I think of some of the challenges for advisors here in the state or practitioners in uh, the APEC region, you know, we likely are going to see lower returns in the next couple of years than we have, you know, certainly in the bull market run. Yield or finding yield in portfolio has been certainly challenging over the last couple of years. We've started to see these bouts of volatility as there's a lot of uncertainty with Russia, Ukraine, China, Taiwan. You, you kind of pick the battle. 
And then, of course, a phenomenon that we have here in America, which is very acute and, and very problematic, is inflation. And I suspect that a lot of those things kind of carry over and impact the way that practitioners are thinking about allocating assets and investing uh, in your part of the world as well. Uh, that's very true. Uh, I, I, I can't I can't disguise disguise the fact, Tony, that uh, I've I've been around for a little while, and uh, so the portfolio construction forum business is uh, twenty years old. Uh, before that, I spent twenty years uh, growing and building. Uh, so I've had forty years in this space. And the truth is that in Australia in particular, the significant majority of those involved in uh, practicing portfolio construction for individual investors in the wealth management world, as it would be called here, the significant majority of practitioners have never seen a recession, mm -hmm. have never seen interest rates grow, uh, rise, have never seen inflation of any significance beyond one or two percent. And so in some respects, it is like a whole new world. And that's the environment that you are starting to touch on in your question. And that puts even more central to the thinking, how do we deal with the macro environment and make sure that uh, the investment portfolios that are designed end up meeting uh, individual client objectives. And that's why I opened by saying this wrap you put around this podcast series of goals-based investing is um, increasingly challenging because there are all sorts of new moving parts that haven't necessarily been experienced or considered uh, by practitioners. And I think that's the same phenomenon here. You know, it's funny, you and I have both been around for a long time. We can't hide it. And candidly, we shouldn't hide it because there's a lot of wisdom and experience that comes through the fact that we've lived through multiple cycles. And certainly here in, in the States, I recall, you know, the hardly corrosive effects of inflation in the 80s. But you're so right that so many advisors or practitioners haven't been through that environment. And, and I'd argue, and I've been arguing for quite some time, advisors and practitioners need a different playbook. They need a more evolved playbook. They need different sets of tools to respond appropriately to these new challenges that we're facing. And as daunting as that can feel, the good thing is, I think we have more tools at our disposal than we ever have before. So to me, the, the, the key point here is how do, we, how do we educate advisors and practitioners, how to use these tools wisely and effectively and to me, the goals-based discussion is essentially switching from just merely maximizing return, but solving for specific outcomes that clients expect and need uh, going forward. So I know that kind of ties in also to your theme for the upcoming conference. And I remember when you and I were talking about it, I was, I was kind of interested because I think you captured the essence of the environment we live in here today. So maybe talk a little bit about the upcoming conference and how you plan on kind of tackling and bringing all the expertise and the, the people who need the knowledge together. Thanks. The, the way I'd like to introduce an answer to your uh, question is to say, we find it's really helpful to uh, segment to some extent your thinking um, in portfolio construction terms into what we describe as, on the one hand, the fundamental factors of portfolio construction, and I'll come back and talk about that in half a moment. And on the other hand, the human factors in portfolio construction. And the human factors to me embrace issues of uh, psychological influence, uh, sociological inf influence, uh, which we call phenology, and your philosophical perspective, your, your core beliefs that you impose into the way that you behave, that you practice. And so picking up on your point you made, Tony, about a different way of thinking, when it comes to your philosophy, when it comes to you thinking about human factors, there needs to be a really clear determination as to whether your focus as a practitioner is looking to maximize returns out of a portfolio 
which is an arguable approach, or on the other side, you're looking to maximize the likelihood of the investor achieving the goals and outcomes and objectives that they've identified uh, with the practitioner, with the advisor. And I think that distinction is a really important piece to stamp into the ground and describe as one of the human factors in portfolio construction, because it relates to your core beliefs. Mm -hmm. The way Portfolio Construction Forum operates is to say, part of our ethos is to challenge your portfolio construction beliefs. So that's a way that what Tony's describing and what I'm describing connects, because there's an essence when the argument of e.g. goals-based investing or maximizing the likelihood of a client uh, achieving their objectives through the investment portfolio, achieving its objectives. That's a philosophical question. So once that's established, there are then these fundamental factors, if you like. And one of the fundamental factors is understanding the, the macro environment, the market environment. And that ends up influencing when, you, when you're clear on what's driving investment returns, what's driving the outlook for investment returns. And we've touched on some of the changes that are in existence right now. When you're clear on that, you're then fair and square in the place of designing strategies that are most likely to achieve the investment objectives uh, that you've set. So coming up in uh, three weeks time uh, from now is our annual strategies conference, as we call it. And its focus over a two day period is on identifying the most effective strategies to achieve investment outcomes. But the most effective way of designing a portfolio is going to depend on the market environment, as I've touched on, and ultimately on your philosophy. So we weave those elements in together with the Strategies Conference program, and we're delighted to have uh, Tony Davido coming down specifically from New York City to Sydney City um, to give some perspectives on goals-based investing. Fantastic. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Graham, we've talked a lot about what unites us and what is kind of a common set of things that we're responding to. Are there unique things in your region that maybe we don't think about here? You know, you're obviously much closer to China than we are. Uh, I suspect there's, there's a lot more trading with China and Australia. Are there unique set of challenges that you may experience or your practitioners experience there that we're not aware of? The most unique issue is um, that the Australian marketplace is ultimately about 2% of the world market. And clearly, uh, the US is a far more uh, significant proportion uh, with China. So uh, Australia, Australia, I've described previously as uh, almost like uh, a love child of the US and China. Um, and the single biggest challenge that Australia has had over recent years is to try and figure out how do we make sure that we keep uh, strong, uh, both political, but also economic relations uh, with the US and with China. So politically, Australia is uh, very uh, strongly aligned uh, with the US, um, both in, in, in political uh, treaties and structures, but also in its way of thinking. And yet, on the flip side, it's got a very significant trading environment uh, in place with, uh, with China because of the uh, hard resources that uh, Australia has been blessed with. So that's the single biggest difference I would see between Australia and the US and between the mindset of practitioners in Australia, which of necessity is very much more outward looking compared to those in the US where it's possible to be more, um, if you like, introspective. Uh, you, you're, you're able to be more self-contained. But notwithstanding that difference, when it comes down to the heart of designing and building and managing quality portfolios to achieve the goals that individual investors have, the same principles apply mm -hmm. and the same essence is in play. And that's why, uh, for example, the SEMA program, which I've touched on already, has just as much applicability 
the, the curriculum is exactly the same for those practicing in the Australian market as those practicing in the US market. Uh, so we happen to have a different education provider, Portfolio Construction Forum, for practitioners in Australia compared to those in the US that can use Yale or Wharton or Chicago booth uh, for the SEMA program. But the essence of the curriculum is exactly the same. So I draw together, Tony, the, distinct, the, the, the distinction between Australia uh, in an operational sense, in a practitioner sense, and the US, but then bring it back together to say, but when it comes down to it, although tax, regulation, maybe some political issues are slightly different or maybe materially different, the essence of designing and building and managing quality portfolios is the same. Graham, it's been great as always just spending time with you and you and I, when we get together, we could, we could go on for hours and hours just talking about the things that we're so passionate about, our, our beliefs around portfolio construction and investing and education and giving back to the community, which I know you do a great deal of. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks and I'll give one plug and, you know, I look forward to not only coming to speak, but to listen, because I know that you bring in kind of an array of speakers from all over the globe. Uh, and you offer that global perspective on the world. So I, I'm looking forward to uh, participating, but also learning a lot as I'm there. So thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you in person and I look forward to meeting so many of your practitioners who I had the opportunity to meet uh, virtually last year. So thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you and, and, and your audience. Thanks for, thanks for being part of Portfolio Construction Forum.